Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration, Sunday, January 14, 2024. I pray that God will be with you today. I pray that his blessing will be poured out on you and your families. Our reading today comes to us from Romans chapter 6, reading verse 1 to 7. And it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2 says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was risen up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6 Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 7 and last says, for he that is dead is free from sin. And I say, Amen. To God be the glory. I am so thankful for Jesus' sacrifice. I am so thankful that he took the time to save a wretch like me. And so... As we consider his sacrifice and consider what he has done for us, we should give him the glory that is due to his name. Now the reading this morning tells us that God's grace is sufficient to save us, but not because we have grace in abundance mean that we should continue in sin so we are encouraged that we should be dead to sin remember when jesus died on the cross he took our sin and then when he was resurrected he raised to new life in a similar manner when we surrender to Christ, when we give our life to him, we also are dead to sin and then we are resurrected to new life, meaning that sin should not reign in our lives anymore. Because when a man is dead, he is free from sin. When you think about the logics of it. Because a dead man cannot sin. A dead man cannot do anything. And so if we are dead to sin. It therefore means. That we should not be practicing any sin. Now the Bible says that we are born in sin. And shaping in iniquity. That's a different scenario than what is being um, stated here. Yes, we are all sinner, but the passage here is talking about a practicing sin. Okay? Now, God's grace is sufficient to handle all sin, but we have a part to play. So we are not to take God's grace for granted. And that is why 
the baptism plays such a significant role in the life of a believer because it represents Jesus' death and resurrection. It, re it represents our transformation from a life of sin to a life of restoration without sin or practicing sin. So when we go under the water, it represents Jesus' death. And when we rise out of the water, it represents his resurrection. So we are transformed in a manner. So we are signifying to the world that now we have give up a life of sinful pleasure and now we have taken on the righteousness of Christ and so we walk in newness of life and so the things that we used to do that are wrong we should not be still doing them if we are dead to sin you see where I'm going so if we are dead to sin it therefore means that we must turn over a new leaf a new chapter has begun in our life and now we have a new experience to live and so not because god's grace exists mean that this is a green card for us to keep sinning no god's grace is dear for us to access is forgiveness for our sins when we confess them to him and give us a chance to eternal life and so as we accept this gift of life and as we accept his grace and as we are baptized into his life may we put off the old man and put on the new man and may we walk in favor with God and may we live a life covered with his righteousness may we live faithfully may we walk circumspect and may we continue to live holy lives until Jesus returns God bless you and God keep you Amen.